Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we are gonna be talking about using functions. We're gonna be using the power function, so P-O-W. We're gonna talk about how to use it, how to put it inside of an expression, all kinds of cool stuff. Now, if functions are completely new to you, you guys might wanna watch the previous two videos. If you've had some experience with functions, then this video should be pretty easy to get started with. So let's just dive in. But first, check out our sponsor, Embarcadero. They offer the C++ Builder. This is an application development environment. So it comes with everything you need to develop applications. You'll have an IDE, a compiler, a designer, a debugger, code completion, all kinds of great tools for developing in C++. When you're starting out, working in a console like this works just fine, but as you build more complex applications, having a tool set like C++ Builder is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. They also have a free community edition, so you can get started with C++ Builder right away. Check them out, guys. I'll leave a link for you in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you go check them out. Now, let's get started with using functions. So, the power function looks like this. P-O-W, then you put the parentheses, and inside of here we put arguments. So if we wanted to take 10 and raise it to the second power, it would look like this, 10 comma two. And let's just say we wanna output this. What we can do is we can use C out, use the arrows and put pow right there directly, and then make sure we end this with a semicolon. So when we run this, it's not gonna work. We get an error, it says use of undeclared identifier pow. That's because this pow function is not made available to us by default. Similar to how we have to include this IO stream in order to use C out or C in, we have to use another include to use math functions like pow. So this is going to be C math. Now when we compile, it should work. And when we run, we get 100. So this shows us something pretty simple, how to call a function. You put the name of the function and then you put the parentheses if it takes any data, you pass that data in. If there's multiple arguments, you separate them by commas. So this is the first argument. This is the second argument. Now we are hard coding those values in, but we do not have to do that. For example, we can pass variables into the arguments here. So let's say we're gonna use C in to create some variables and then we're gonna pass them here. So let's say we have a base and we have an exponent like so. Just make sure I got the syntax right. And you can see that it actually allows us to declare two variables on one line here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do C in arrow arrow, and we're going to get a value for base. So let's just ask the user like so, and then they put the base in. And then after that, we're going to ask them for the exponent. And then we're gonna store that inside of exponent right here. So now instead of using 10 and two directly, we can put the variables base and exponent. Now let's compile and run. What is the base? Let's go with 10. What is the exponent? Let's go with two. And you can see it still gives us 100. But now we've just generalized our program beyond just raising 10 to the second power. We can do all kinds of different inputs. Now I accidentally compiled again, but you don't actually have to compile if you haven't made any code changes. So all you have to do is run the application again. The base is 10, but this time let's raise it to the 10th power and you can see we get a really big number. So this is one times 10 to the 10th power. Now the situation we have here, we are using pow directly in C out, but if we wanted to assign it to a variable, we can do that as well. So let's get rid of C out, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, and this actually needs to be of type double. So we can say double, we can call it power. This is important because in this scenario, this function pow has a return value. It returns the result. It's only going to be useful to us if we do something with it. Whether that means storing it in a variable or outputting it directly, it doesn't matter. All we know is that we have to use it. So what I mean by that is if we got rid of this here and just had pow right here, it's gonna calculate that value and then that value is just gonna disappear. Not very useful. So we're gonna save it to a variable and then we're gonna output that variable instead. It's gonna give us the same result, but I just wanted to show you guys how to use a return value from a function and assign that to a variable. Now, when we run this, we can put a base in like four, raise that to the third power, and we get 64. We could definitely customize that C out if we wanted to look any better. So we could say end L right here. Throughout the series, we're gonna use a lot of functions. And we're also gonna create our own functions, and that's what we're gonna be doing in the next video. It's gonna be really cool. Definitely step up your C++ game. Check it out, guys. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. That really helps out my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.